Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Caden's Podcast, who is me, whose name I forgot for a second, but I also got it. So today's episode of Caden's Podcast is brought to you by White Glove Carpet Cleaning. Hey, did you know that in the average home, up to five pounds of dirt can collect under carpeting every year? Viruses like the norovirus can survive in your carpeting for up to a month as well. Dust, pollen, viruses, mold, and even pests such as dust mites thrive in uncleaned carpets and upholstery. White Glove Carpet Cleaning <coughs> is a... <coughs> oh, frog in my throat. <coughs> White Glove Carpet Cleaning is a Davis County family-owned company that has been solving these issues for over 25 years. From homeowner to business person, White Glove provides professional steam cleaning to carpets, tile, upholstery, and vehicles with the utmost care and is your 24-7 contact for flood and mold emergencies. Right now, White Glove is offering an incredible deal, which includes three bedrooms and one hallway for just 99 bucks. Text White Glove at 801 801- 425-4618 to schedule an appointment and to give your carpets the white glove treatment it deserves. That's 801-425-4618. Today I had a great time with my guest. Um, we had a wonderful conversation about religion, of course, and about health. And uh, uh, it was with a longtime friend, Hayden Langston. I'm really excited uh, for everyone to listen to this to this episode, I hope that if you hear it and it impressed you in any way that you subscribe and review and rate this episode and this podcast and share it with anybody that you think would benefit from it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Hayden Langston. <laughs> Just you and me, sit down, face to face. I mean, when was the last time something like this happened? We haven't been this personal probably since high school. No, or, shut since, up. Uh, since college. I mean, since yeah. when we were in Logan. Yeah. Because you got married, right? You got you got married and then left right away. Yeah. And you left me and Horsley and Hudge and Damon <laughs> in Logan all to ourselves. But yeah. we we we. We never, we're still, well, now it's mostly me and Horsley here, and Hudge is married now. Mm-hmm. But you were the first to break off from all of the guys. Yes. You realize that. Yeah. And I've always wondered, I know that it, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was kind of a hard thing for, I mean, I know it was for me. I don't know how it was for you guys when I got married, and what that meant was that I wasn't going to be living in Logan. I wasn't going to be nearby. It was hard for you? Well, it, the idea of that was hard for me, but I'm wondering what it was like for you guys. Well, I, I only had to deal with, like, the idea of you leaving until it actually became a re- – until – I think it hurts actually more now <laughs> than it did then because now I'm even more – now more of our friends have gotten married. Yeah. It was like you were the first one to go and it was cool and it was uh, it was when it, you did it when it was cool, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you it was. Oh, I don't know. I don't I don't. It was like it sucked. But I had moved back down here shortly after you left. And. And I really think we play so many video games and still talk enough yeah. where it's not like you're really. But no we don't have personal time like this. No, no, no. Especially in person. But we yeah. I mean, we hear from one another daily. Daily. Whether Easily. it's over Call of Duty or whether it's over text or sending a funny video or something or sending each other songs. Like we still hear from each other all the time. I know. But to like set the stage for everyone, me and you have known each other, I was thinking about it today, for twelve years. Yeah. Oh since sixth grade. So I, I moved in when I was 12. Since we were 11? Is that 11? 12. 12? This is what I remember in sixth grade. And so now I'm 24. Oh. I'm 24 now. 
you're going to be 24 in let's see oh you know un- under a month oh now. you know of course <laughs> <laughs> so cute. 12 years yeah wow and i was thinking like man that's crazy at 24 i can say that i've known someone for that long that's not my family yeah because i was listening to a podcast recently where they were talking about how they had known someone for 16 years and they're like, oh, man, that's such a long time. And I was like, man, that is not that much longer than we've known each other. But 16 years is, well, even 12 years is half of my life. That's half of our I lives. Know, I know. We've known each other for half of our lives. <laughs> 16 years is three quarters of our lives. Right. <laughs> and so I think why there was such like this uh, this weird shift that took place when I got married um, cause I moved away and that was like the first time any one of us had like really broken off because we were, how do I say it? Uh, is inseparable oh, the right word? Like, like <laughs> oh. conjoined twins. Seriously. Well, we're Hayden and Caden. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can it's at least our names are conjoined. <laughs> I know, but like in high school, I mean, I don't, if, if we had a chance to be together, we were together and like Hudge was there and horse and everyone. Well, yeah, I, I told my mom, I told my mom we were doing this today and she, I asked her what she'd want to hear. And she said, why are you and Hayden so close? What, <laughs> what is it about your relationship that, well, that started off so strong. Yeah. Even though we had a couple hiccups. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We could talk about our hiccups. We fought over the same girl a couple of times. <laughs> it never works out either. It worked well. It didn't even work out for one of them. Well, okay, we'll talk about that. But then, what is even through um, major life events like getting married, going on missions, and having kids, and what? So, what do you? What do you? I've thought about that for a few hours. What do you think has? What is it about us? That just kept that's kept us close. I think it's that we just jive in this really specific way, uh, have this really interesting chemistry. Like a story that I was thinking about. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, we would do these really really stupid music videos growing up well, th- throughout junior high. <laughs> they went like they were really cool when we did them, and then they were really no. stupid. But now they're really cool again. I think. <laughs> I think if people watched them again, they'd realize that they're still really cool. Right, right. But the gimmick of those music videos, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but we were trying to portray that we were taking things like really seriously in the music video and that we were trying to be, you know, just super into it, serious faces. And we knew that that was the gimmick. That was what was going to be funny about the music video. So when we shot one with Hudge and Horse, they were like, oh, well, we should do this part where we're on the toilet. And we're like, no, 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 that's that's when it's too obviously a gimmick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we were just on the same wavelength with that. And so that's just a really small example of like how we kind of think similarly in that sort of situation. Yeah. Well, you know, I, okay. I'm, I'm going to let you take the lead on, on that because the way I, okay. I agree with you. I mm-hmm. agree with you. And I want to, and I, but the only thing that stuck in my head is, in ninth grade or eighth grade walking home from school and you had your what was the flip cameras was it called (laughs) they were flip or like my white ones no no the those white little cameras that we did all the things on Uh, i don't remember what they're called but i know what you're talking about it's just this little like four inch rectangle block they were called they were like flip flip cameras right yeah i think so all that all that's on there is a record button yeah and and it was yeah for sure flip cameras we had like the yep, very there, first there one. They are. We're looking at the video are they, of them. And they still sell them for three two sixty. <laughs> <laughs> we probably had a thirty dollar flip camera. Yeah. Um, I remember walking home from school and you said, I have this great idea for a music <laughs> video. And <laughs> you said, Let's do a Britney we're gonna make a music video to a Britney Spears song. <laughs> Was it hit me? It wasn't hit me, baby. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, hit me, baby, one more time for sure. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was. Oops, I did it again. Oops, I did yeah, it again. Yeah. And I thought it was a stupid idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I and, but it was just you and me and Carson Shawley. Yeah. No, and Bailey Banta <laughs> showed up. Yeah. And I thought it was a really. I thought that it was a really stupid idea until we finished it and showed everybody else that laughed at it. Mm-hmm. And then I think. You thought it was a stupid idea the whole time? I thought the whole first one was so dumb. 
Because <laughs> you was you when like like we well we had caught we'd like pound through my dad's closet and find yeah, all of the yeah. nicest clothes that we could yeah. find. All of them, Rob like, had the nicest duds <laughs> in his every, closet. Had the, the, yeah. A the, fedora. Uh, fedoras and jackets and nice jeans with the with the bezels. Yes. And we would do stupid over the shoulder. Yes. Oh my okay, so I thought that was dumb until we until we did the next one, which was the Titanic one, right? Uh-huh. And that one had Hudge and Horse I think it just and had- Damon. I think it just had Ian. We got to. Oh, we should have looked these up. We should watch these. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> we should at least watch. I the have buried them. Britney Spears one. <laughs> I wonder if we oh. could find it. I, I still get I'm notifications sure. for the Facebook page. Yeah. that People are going to the page. Yeah. No, it's still. Be- they're still being watched <laughs> by someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I, so um, um, I do think our interest in in music and in movies have always and in humor have always been very similar. I think humor is where we really vibe off of each humor, other, don't you yeah. think? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I'd say for most of our friends, we can yes. all get into a room and laugh at the same stupid shit yes. all all night long. But I cannot do that with anyone else, I'll tell you that. I I've I've gotten into like Mariah and I will go and hang out with some new couple that we're you know trying to become friends with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll I'll try my very best to be funny, but man, it does not land like it does when we're with our friends or when me and you are together. I wonder if I wonder. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't my humor doesn't translate to like the general population. Yeah, yeah. at least that's how I feel. <laughs> I think the people that know us the longest get us the most. Right. I I I don't know if I don't know if it's just because we have done we've had the same humor for so long. Yeah. Or if we really are so. Well, I, I think that, like, I just know that if I set you up for a joke, that you're going to spike it. Yeah, the volleyball. The volleyball yeah. parable. Yes. There's a bump, there's a set, and there's a spike. Oh, yeah. And our friend group gets all of those. Yes. We we recogn- the we bump by recognizing like, something oh, so, funny so, or Someone's going to start telling a joke. The set is telling the joke, and then the spike is someone – and, and someone hitting the punchline, but everybody, anybody can do any yes. part, any, yes. any point of those. <laughs> yes. and, they, and they always land. <laughs> yes. Maybe, maybe just for us. <laughs> yeah. I think humor, I think, yeah, humor is probably the biggest. Uh... But like another example that I think about is we were also, we should say in a band mm. uh, for all, well, yeah, all through high school, me and you were at least, we would do the thing where we would have that guitar teacher, who would put on these little the summer concerts. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. That me and you would just do. Uh-huh. And then eventually we recruited Jackson and Brent and we actually put together some numbers. The steps. <laughs> yes. The steps. The steps. <laughs> <laughs> but it started I, I, as. I forgot the band name. Um, That's right. La Dolce, La Dolce Vita. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's know. some stupid Italian phrase I don't know. that I saw. I saw it on a wall yeah. in, a, in an Italian restaurant as I was eating pizza and salad. Yes, and I, and I was like, "That's the band name. That's it." <laughs> I think I sent it in, but we had to come up with a name yeah. for when we did Battle of the Bands, and we had no name, so we went with that for. We went with that for the first round of Battle of the Bands, right? And then everybody hated it. Well, then we were like, "Well, what does that mean?" <laughs> so, as, I think we. Did, I don't think that anyone like really loved the steps either. We just that was all the one that everyone in the band hated the least, and we just rolled with that. Oh, I like the steps. I like it, but I remember that Jackson was like really opposed to it. I can't answer this, but I'm gonna shoot him a text. Um, but um, I, I I remember everyone being really opposed to it. You do? I I actually like still think about the steps sometimes, and want to make T-shirts because <laughs> I think it, you just got to do like. Steps and then put the steps underneath. Yes. And then put the name underneath <laughs> actual steps. I think it would be a sweet, yeah. uh, cool shirt. But we should say that we were moderately successful. We won five hundred dollars with the standard examiner. Five hundred. We won. Um, five hundred was more than that. No, I think we each won like two hundred fifty. Yeah. And the standard examiner won. And but we then... we won a newspaper sponsored battle of the bands. That was the the climax of our music career. <laughs> but anyways, the reason that I brought it up is because when we were making songs, 
Jackson would have this, he's an awesome bassist. And so he would rip out this crazy, intricate bass line that just wasn't working with the melody that we were trying. We're like, Jackson, you're standing out a little bit too much. And me and you were on the same wavelength of like, no, like, let's simplify this. Let's take it a step back. It'll sound better. Yeah, that's that's another that's true. He was always he was the worst, and then he turned out to be way better than any of us. Yeah, he's <laughs> by he, far the most accomplished. And then he was, and then he became a show off. Yeah, and uh, now he's into, and then he's always been into music that I don't think either of us really jive with. No, no. I think the the only the only point where we meet is Vampire Weekend. I always <laughs> sing of Jackson when I listen to Vampire Weekend. <laughs> I love Vampire Weekend too. So, um, yeah, so music. Yeah, and I and I then I hear a lot of throwbacks from high school every now and then for music, and uh, I think that's what keeps us most in touch with we're not playing video games. Yeah, but I mean, we should really thank video games though, to be honest, because that really that's the saved that's our no that friendship. that's the uh, that's the meat of the of the sandwich. Is that what people yeah, say? Yeah, that is something that people say. <laughs> the meat of the sandwich. <laughs> Because I spend so much time doing that, but I was, uh, but I, I was at lunch today with my family, and I and I said, I was saying, um, I want to get into well, because I want to cancel my gym membership and do something that I like, a, pick up a hobby mm-hmm. that will that requires physical exercise mm-hmm. that will keep me fit or make me stronger, but it's something that, like climbing, like rock climbing or tennis, which are two things that I I play a lot of tennis already. Um, and my mom was like, well, what do you what do you spend your time with doing already? And I'm like, I play video games. I play so many video games, and I can't get fit playing video games. I can't quit the gym to play video games because then I'm going to be missing yeah. a key point, a key ingredient to my happiness. <laughs> I need the phys- I need physical exercise. It's actually yeah. it's, it's actually well I know a lot. No, of, this is science. This is science. Yeah. yeah. What is endorphins? It yes. releases endorphins. Yeah. That makes. Yeah, you know way more about oh my this gosh, than I do. Yeah, and it helps your blood flow and just your overall health in like immeasurable ways. Mm-hmm. Like you have to work out, I would say, to experience optimal health. So, so if nobody could see you right now, but everybody needs to know that you're an incredibly fit person. Well, yeah, and mm-hmm. your wife is promotes that more than anybody that I know. <laughs> Which we could give her a shout out, yeah. and if you are looking to lose weight or to get into a healthy place in your life, reach out to Mariah Langston, yeah. and she will help you get on track. Yeah. There's her plug. This podcast is brought to you by Optavia. Optavia, thank you. Okay, now anyway, <laughs> so anyway, what's what is the your your goal with exercise? Because you don't you're not you're not just like a fit person, but you're you've always been exceptionally strong. But- yeah, well, I would say that that's my goal. Like when I go to the gym, I'm trying to increase my bench my squat and my deadlift you you actually track how much you're lifting oh yeah you remember it and well, i have i have it. an app yeah there's yeah. an app called heavy set that i highly recommend another and plug. yeah another plug this app this, <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by heavy <laughs> set <laughs> but um it helps you to keep track of your your sets your reps and the weight that you used and it'll tell you when you've done a new pr so I don't know if you remember like that day that I texted you. I'm like, because I was listening to some dubstep per, you, per dubstep. your uh, suggestion <laughs> <laughs> from the night before. Yeah. And uh, so I was squatting and I did hit a new PR and it told me on the app when I entered it in. Oh, right on. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's why I, uh, when I brought it up, yeah, that's what it happened. I've never, but. I've never tracked. Well, I, the only time I've ever tracked how much. The only okay, the only one I've ever cared about is bench, and mm-hmm. the only time I ever really cared was in high school when you and Damon were benching because of football, and then we had a bench and we were always benching, yeah, <laughs> doing push-ups and stupid shit. <laughs> I've never really cared about um, the amount of weight that I've lifted. In fact, I think the older I get, the less I care. The le- personally, the less I care about how much. How much? How strong I am? I mm-hmm. I care more about how I look. Yes. How much is look a part of what you're trying? Does look have anything to do with what you're accomplishing? Look has something to do with it when I know that I'm going to be taking my shirt off in the next mm. <laughs> couple months. So for summer, I'll get I'll trim down and I'll get a six pack and you know look my best. Like it's easy. No, it's not easy. <laughs> it, I should say that. Like I have to work overtime because yeah. my my metabolism is not such that I can eat whatever I want. Like if I eat whatever I want, I 
I don't know if you remember when I came back from my mission, but I was You were chonk. a chonk boy, yeah. dude. <laughs> you were a chonky boy. I was more jolly. It was probably the happiest I've ever been. <laughs> <Jolly>. <laughs> I came home at 205. Yeah. And as heavy. I sit here today, I'm 165. But uh, Yeah, that's awesome, though. Well, and it yeah. was from T25. No, I, I did Insanity. Or Insanity yeah. with Sean T. Yeah. <laughs> dude, no, I'm... I love Shanti. Yeah. I have a personal relationship with Shanti through T25. Yes. Because I, I was at 210, 215 on my mission. Yeah. And I did that six month slim down. I was dedicated. I was probably more dedicated to the six month <laughs> slim down than anything else in California. And I hit Shanti every morning. Yeah. And came home at 160. Wow. And I, had, and I only ate tilapia and broccoli. Yeah. Every day. What I did you do when members tried to feed you some? I said I would Some request. Cake. If, well, if they ever asked what I'd want to eat, I'd say fish or chicken and broccoli. <laughs> and your <laughs> companion just hated your guts. Well, I had that at that time. My companions hated my gut, my guts for a lot of reasons, and it was because <laughs> I wanted to exercise in them. I wanted like take advantage of the exercise time. Yeah. And I was I was also like going home and wanted to do the like i had a i had another okay my last six months were actually kind of interesting i showed up at um chico california and i have a, i'm in a trio mm -hmm. with a, se a senior missionary that's going home two transfers before me mm -hmm. and a, a greenie yeah. and the and the the vet was burnt to a crisp right and was ready to go and As the greenie does. was all up in everyone's grill like greenie yeah he was like he was the pumped up greenie he was pumped up about the work he was pumped up <laughs> and i was like trying to balance the i'm tired i want to go home with the i can't stop working and so they both resented me <laughs> <laughs> and then the burnt out one went home i had one more transfer with the newbie I was I and then you start that. Um, oh, maybe that was the last six weeks. You get like the transition to home papers, yeah. Or whatever. Oh, yeah. And uh, I would. Yeah, I had a. It was interesting because then he resented me and only wanted to work and wanted to do a lot of transfer exchanges. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really care. I was I was just. Well, anyway, he eventually left. I got another greenie for my last six weeks who put me in a headlock within the first two weeks literally L literally at, on a p-day he put he me put in, you in a headlock. he put me in a head <laughs> we were playing basketball <laughs> we were playing basketball and, and if you know Caden, like do not put you in a headlock you just don't <laughs> like being like like i love to wrestle growing up like me and damon would like really throw down but me and you we never wrestled well i've always well i have a troubled history from my parents divorce oh yeah. no that's i i don't know if that <laughs> gives me but I, I it's true i i've never liked that kind of, well i get worked up i really get worked up oh i know because i when you're wrestling me i want to actually win yeah. and then i can't win because i'm a not strong <laughs> enough or i'm not a, i'm not a wrestler enough and i can't yeah. i can't so then i get so it's frustrated and i want to hit you yeah but then you shove me through walls yeah that's true. <laughs> that's a true story I, yeah i shove caden through a wall so this missionary was a newbie. I can't. I don't know Put why. You in a headlock. He was a Polynesian and just didn't like me. I he don't know. Polynesians, but oh yeah, I don't know why that matters <laughs> that I mentioned he's a Polynesian. <laughs> but it just uh, wasn't about you. It, yeah. So we were playing basketball one day, and then he shoved me on the ground. I probably was. I was, you know, playing against him. He shoved me on the ground, Man. and he put me in a headlock, and I was like. Like in front of other missionaries. In front of the whole zone. Wow. And everyone's like, other whatever his name was, you got to, what are you doing? And I was like, I was like, hey, get off of my neck. Oh, <laughs> and my gosh. And, he's, and then he like did the shove, like, the, you know. The oh, thing, my gosh. Like in the movies. And then afterwards, I was like, what ha what happened? Are we good? <laughs> he's like, yeah, I had to get that out. And then, every, <laughs> and, then, and then we had a, and then everything was fine. And then the day I was leaving, he was driving me to wherever I needed to go. And we were having like our heart to heart when you leave your companion. I was like, dude, yeah, like it's been a it's been a crazy six weeks. It's like it was a blast. Well, yeah. I, I was like, we worked really hard. He was brand new, so yeah. uh, we were we we had a good time. And then I was like, thanks, man. You taught me a lot. I had a great time with you. And he said, 
This was the la- hardest six weeks of my life. <laughs> <laughs> And then I just said, all right. And then I got my suitcase and I got out of the car. Uh, I just find that fascinating because having spent so much time with you, I feel like you are exceptionally easy to live with. I mean, I might be totally wrong now. Yeah, I don't think I am. Really? I I, uh, I think I'm easy to get along with. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. I'm, I think I'm overly friendly, but I am also really like uh, – you like things a particular way. I'm particular for sure. I I'm very particular and I have routine mm-hmm. and I don't think I have a lot of give. I don't right now. I wish I did because I it bothers people. Even like even the people that live here are well, I, I'm like I'm not well, I'm not rude, but I just on my mission I was probably rude because nobody did their, you know, like dishes and vacuuming and sweeping. Right. I also come from an unreasonable household as far as cleaning standards, mm. so I, yeah. I just I just had an expectation. You, even today, Cannon was like, I I have to, I I'm like, how can you not live the way that mom cleans the house? Mm-hmm. And mom's like, actually, I am dysfunctional. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a dysfunctional cleaner, so I have definitely had that. But isn't that kind of a double edged sword though? Because like, yeah, you don't move on those types of things, but. At the same time, you're really passionate about what you believe in. Oh, yeah. And you feel like it's correct. Oh, yeah. All the time. Which is a good thing. That motivates you to, I mean, start this podcast, right? Yeah. 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 But I I recognize that overconfidence can be bad or Mm -hmm. being ignorant. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want to be ignorant um, because a lot of the things that I believe now are – controversial to what i used to believe i i can recognize that and say that i can be open-minded to other things in the future and mm-hmm. i but uh i don't want to ever be i want to be really i just want to like if i'm going to say something i want to mean it and yes. i don't want to if i'm going to do something you don't want to be like something you don't want someone to say about you like i can't tell if Caden feels this way or this way like they want you want people to know how you feel yeah about, so. at least the people that yeah, if it's if it's pertinent to you, like, yeah. I, like, yeah, I, I don't ever want to be two face. I don't want to be, I don't want to be a liar or I don't want to deceive. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. But you're the what same way. Is. You're the same way. You're just not as in people's face. So, I would say that I'm. I feel really, really strongly about what I believe for sure, and I'll stand by it. But at the same time, I'm willing to compromise so that everyone in the situation is comfortable, if that makes sense. So like, hmm, what's a good example of this? I want to make sure that everyone uh, feels like they have an equal say in the matter. So like if Mariah, my wife, wants to do something and I feel differently, I want to do the best to meet in the middle. I don't know if I, I get this weird satisfaction from finding a good compromise where we can both be happy. So I think that when it comes to like what we're going to talk about, when it comes to the church, I want to have a scenario where someone like you who doesn't believe in the church and someone like me who is still, you know, very much involved in the church can come together, have a great time, you know, nothing but love and compassion is felt and, then you can go your separate ways and it doesn't have to be this contentious, awkward thing. Like I want in every circumstance, I think that that's what I'm kind of fighting for. Well, yeah, I think any reasonable person should really, I, <laughs> it's a I, hard thing though. It is so hard. It is actually a lot more. Dif- I mean, the, the more mature I'm becoming, the more difficult I see it is for a lot of people, even my family. It's hard. It's hard to separate religion or beliefs with a person mm. and with their morals i uh so i read i've so I read or heard something somewhere about people not being happy with donald trump in office but they were okay because he's christian oh. and i thought Ooh. yeah and i'm like what does being a christian or believing no, no, in no. god have anything to do with the morals or the ethics of a person yeah i think i think that standard alone is totally unreasonable so I should I think everybody should be able to to okay first of all if what you believe in is going to hurt me or my family I'm not going to accept it right. I think that's reasonable sure. for for most people but if you are doing if you are able to 
um, do something or believe and practice something that is helpful for you. It's helpful for your community and um, is not infringing on me or our relationship or my family and uh, and that whole situation. Then I shouldn't have any say in what you believe. I mm -hmm. shouldn't. I shouldn't actively. You shouldn't try and deter you away me from, from what I believe. Right, and and then the same thing goes for the the religion or the practice that you're involved in. If it's, I I also believe it the other way. I think you. I okay. So so, a good example is missionary work, and mm -hmm. the church will always is always inviting and bringing people into the church, and um, which if you so okay. So I think you and everybody that is religious and wants wants to share the the happiness that they are receiving mm -hmm. should be different than converting people right i think if you are a happy and a healthy person and you are giving credit to your organization mm -hmm. you should everybody should take that for what it's worth and then and then learn that they can have they can either they should learn okay they should they should learn about going. their own yeah, do you get what I'm saying? <clears throat> yeah, let me let me see if I'm understanding okay. you correctly. So, if I feel that the church brings me a lot of happiness, a lot of joy, like you're fine with that, and you're even probably happy for me, correct? Oh yeah. Um, I have no reason not to be. Why? I, yeah. I, but I if I'm then saying, look, Caden, you have to you have to come to church to be happy. All of a sudden, I'm pushing this on you, where really you're happier with your different set of beliefs, right? Yeah. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah. I should, yes. I should I should be able to choose what makes me happy just like you should be able to do the same. Yes. And I shouldn't say what you're doing is wrong or you are less happy than how you could be if, well, you're in, the only one that's in charge of that. You're the right. only one that's going to know what is helpful or harmful for you and for your family. Right. Right. I think also that is that's what's kept our relationship where it's at. We even though I've I have left the church and am on a totally different journey and doing a bunch of different things. Yeah. That it that isn't because I'm not hurting or harming you in any way mm -hmm. is keeping our relation I hope not anyway. No, no. In every every interaction that we have, like I feel nothing but love for you the same way that I have for the past 12 years. You know, nothing oh, has changed. Strong. Yeah, of course. Of course. I'm, I'm smiling behind the microphone. <laughs> I know. I feel the same way. And so that's, that's not going to change. Yeah. You know, but like, and that's why, um, what I want to say, I think that that I'm hoping could be the goal of what we're going to try and get to the bottom of today is because I feel like you and me have been successful at this where, I mean, we, we grew up together completely in the church, me and you. We were in the same ward. You know, we For all, the, we, all of the, yeah. yeah. We went to the same scouting activities. We went on the same trek. And then for you to now uh, disassociate yourself with the church and me to be like, you know, Even I couldn't, I couldn't be more yeah. involved. Um, but to still, in our interactions, have, you know, love and compassion and patience and understanding. I'm hoping that we can get to the bottom of that because I think that it could be really beneficial. You want to try to resolve that? I want to give it our best shot. Okay. Sure. Okay. Well, I think at least as, as far as our relationship goes, we have a we have a long history, like you said, with basically doing the the exact same thing for years. Mm -hmm. We both went to all of all of the church outings uh, Sunday every week. We were neighbors. We have a lot of the same interests. Mm -hmm. We're basically the same person <laughs> for a lot of years. <laughs> and then, uh, and then we're, I think we're also both, we had a time away on our missions to mature a lot and learn a whole bunch about ourselves. Mm -hmm. I learned a whole bunch about myself yeah. away from the influences from home, which was, I think was critical for my yes. development and my, uh, my thought process today who, for who I am. I couldn't have, I couldn't be where I'm. I am today without having that time. Even though, even though I went and I was active the whole time and came back, active Mormon. Sure. It it, the experience I had out there, influenced how I see other people, how I see myself, and how I want my relationships to be. Mm -hmm. And then I eventually learned, a, a lot of that influence 
then came from my dad and his family who mm -hmm. a lot of them are out of the church sure and i was able to say come out of so and i was i was able to say okay i can have a relationship with you even if we don't have it's the same beliefs. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and can I just interject? Yeah. Do you remember when we were, we were sitting in the parking lot of Kroger? Remember, uh, that's behind that gas oh, station. We were working yeah. for this vending company, me and you, when we, so even when we got back, we were working the <laughs> same job. The same person. <laughs> <laughs> we rejoined so fast. Yes. But we were, we were sitting in that car together and this was kind of in the middle of your, uh, it was kind of a hard situation because you're like, no, I want my dad to be a part of my life. I want to figure this out. And we were trying to figure out how to, to make that work. Right. And I just remember being like, of course, yeah, of course we want Rob to be a part of your life. He's your dad. You know, I, I, I remember sitting in the Kroger. I hardly remember the conversation. Actually, I remember talking more about girls. Well, than I mean, anything yeah, else. We had, yeah. didn't we? I'm we, sure. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, it was a pro it was a not a problem. It was something that was well that I had serious problems with for myself because of the oh now okay, I'm starting to remember the the conversation now. Mm -hmm. I just I had to I had to consciously choose to to involve my dad in my life. Right. Even though it was controversial to the way I had lived my life for the last so many years and the relationships that I had with my family at right. the time. And I, I only interject that story to say like that it, it was this thing that you were kind of puzzling through. And I think that you, you figured it out in a way that is best for you, you know, and that has brought you the most happiness. Okay. So, I, so I think, I think at the root of this is our individual intentions with not just you and me, but also, your relationship with the other friends, any friends or family that you have that aren't members of the church mm -hmm. and mine who that, that are, I, I am able to say, I'm able to accept those people for, I'm able to accept you for your beliefs, even though I disagree with the beliefs, with the beliefs and with the organization, I can say that you are still a good person. Yeah. And I could, so, okay. So some people can't separate that. Yeah. Some people, I, I know. And that's, it's an we'll issue. say you are a problem because of your beliefs. Sure. Even, and which could be true for a lot of people. Uh, I, I think a lot of people that are mostly upset with Mormon people are, be, are, have, have, have come out of the church in a negative light. Sure. Yes. I have, yes. I know, I know people who have grown up most of their lives and then eventually left because they of, were offended. Uh, offense. Well, uh, Offense is a is a big one, but it's different. It's different than like than betrayal. People feel betrayed. They come out of the church and feel like they've been wronged their entire lives, mm. which I've never even thought about because I've never felt betrayed. I've never felt like people are intentional were intentionally harming me. Right. I always accepted the church and its beliefs for what they were, and I believed in them. And then I eventually, okay. I had a conversation with my family who with my dad and some of his siblings who have left who feel bitterness mm -hmm. towards the church and, and are upset and angry and I don't want to speak for them but I just I'm being very very vague and a lot of it was because of their um, bring, being brought up in the church and mm -hmm. almost indoctrinated against their will mm -hmm. and um, and then eventually being you know learning a lot of things that have that pulled them out of the church or that that confirmed their uh their controversial belief sure i think it's interesting for the point that they're making to me is we have grown up with information our whole lives mm -hmm. with smartphones and with the internet being accessible all of the time mm -hmm. we're i've always been able to say i choose to believe in the church and i don't i don't need to know all of the I don't need to know anything that is that would bring me away from it, mm -hmm. even though it's available. I don't need to know. I've always accepted. I've always accepted the doctrine and the um, the principles for how, how I always taught them. Mm -hmm. But then, as soon as I started to question them, I was able to well find other alternative uh, um, what's like information. Sure. 
controversial information and support groups and people that are that believe in that as well. And then I was able to interact with them. Mm -hmm. But people didn't have that 10, 15, 20 years ago plus. So you're saying that's where the bitterness comes from. So I've never been. Yeah, I've never I think I've never been bitter because I have been involved on on my own terms Mm. and then removed myself on my own terms. Mm -hmm. I wasn't I wasn't pulled out. And I also didn't. I also never felt betrayed. As soon as I wanted to explore other options, I was never. I never had like. I never felt stuck. Like I couldn't leave. Sure. Right. So I think. I think a lot of people that are that are upset, or maybe that are that hold people accountable, are people that are like the bitter ones and sure. uh, that they feel wronged. Well, they're they're attaching. Like their their bitter feelings towards the church to someone who's in the church, right? In, yeah, in yeah. those types of interactions. And so if you're if you're gonna start an interaction off that way by being like you're a member and you're judging me because I'm I'm drinking a beer in front of you, you know? Well, of course that interaction or in, that, that interaction. interaction. <laughs> <laughs> of course that erection. Interaction. My mouth's dry. I need a, a drink of water. <laughs> Not a lot of erections in, when you're drinking. <laughs> I mean, some people get erections when they're drinking. <laughs> Of course, that interaction is going to go poorly. You know, if it's going to start from a place where you're making up a story about how the other person is perceiving you, whether it's true or not. I agree with that. I also I've I've been on that side, that other side of of the table having. okay, I've had alcohol in front of Mormons. Sure. In front of people that disagree with me. And it's it really is almost completely obvious who approves and who disapproves mm. not and without any words being said mm. maybe and maybe it's my own emotions and perceptions of a person of that person but mm-hmm. it's uh you know the feeling of judgment is is it's raw and it's sure. almost tangible and i don't feel that with you i i don't feel that with any of our friends i think most of our friends are accepting and understanding of of each other of your thought process yeah we just and, yeah, yeah sure we love each other and we have those relationships where it hasn't but i've even with family members it's, yeah it's 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 weird how that message can be conveyed without any words being actually said even if maybe they don't actually they aren't judging me i know it's 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 just an it's attitude. A, I know. It's a tough situation. It's man. weird. It's tough because I, we just barely went to this convention and we learned this really valuable principle where there are facts and there are stories. So like in that situation, like if me and you are sitting together, we're having dinner, you order a beer. The fact is, okay, you're ordering a beer. The fact is I am not going to be drinking a beer. I'm going, you know, I am an active member of the church, whatever. Those are the facts. But then your mind starts to make up these stories like, oh, Hayden's watching me. Like I might glance at your beer or something. You're like, oh, he's looking. He's judging me right Right. now. You know? Oh, yeah. Whether or not I'm actually feeling that way, that could be true or it could not be. It's a story. It's a story that Mm -hmm. we've made up in our heads. That's interesting. And stories are just um, it's the secret ingredient to a bad conversation, a bad interaction. If that makes sense. That does. That's well. It's that's put the whole thing in simple terms. I think it. I think a lot of that has to do. Uh, a lot of the stories come up. One with the bitter, angry Mormons who are like, "Oh, I can't. You know, Mormons won't accept me drinking alcohol, so <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna. You know, I'll get upset at all of them for me doing this." Right. And then the. But then also it comes from the members who are probably uncomfortable or uneducated and unfamiliar yes. with with just with the lifestyle so it's like it's a maybe a genuine curiosity but sure how do you ask or how do you how do you talk about it without coming across controversial or well it's tough because i think that like i think me and you can because we've known each other for so long yeah like i we went to a bar recently for hudge's bachelor party and i was talking to you about like oh so why would you order this beer or something like that you or know? why would you even drink beer? Or what, yeah, why, like, why, why would, would you drink beer? Yeah, if why, it doesn't taste good. You're right, and so I can have this conversation <laughs> with you, and it's not weird. It's no. not, and it's not, it's not awkward. Yeah. But the problem is that there are a lot of situations where people don't feel like they can have that type of conversation. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, maybe it has just to do with the relationship, your relationship with the person, yeah. mostly. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, it's, it's tough. You know, it's a, it's a really tough thing. And so what I would hope and what I would, uh, what I would hope a, a member would bring into a situation like that is just to, to remember really the doctrine of what we're taught. Like if I really believe, and regardless of whether or not you believe that, if I believe that you're a son of God and that you're on equal footing with me and that we are here and we're making mistakes or we're, uh, we're going through different trials or whatnot and no one is better than the other, if that makes sense. If like you really from, believe from, that, right. From a member's perspective, I really feel like that's, that's what it's, what it is. Like, well, me and Caden are, you know, the same people. We're just on different trajectories and we're, you know, just figuring things out in a different way. And there's, there's no harm in that. It's not going to change my feelings toward him. If that makes sense. Well, right, and I don't think it should. I, well, I think that's, again, I think you, I think you and I are comfortable enough, even to talk about it, and uh, and then to truly not feel like our relationship is on the fence because of mm-hmm. either of our decisions. So the, but the, so the problem, I think, I think maybe the biggest thing is, um, some sort of level of education and, uh and really just getting used to the new things. Even even for me, even for me when my brothers came out was mm-hmm. I was I am completely accepting of them. Yeah. But I sure. I have learned a lot. I still don't even know much about their lifestyle. I, I, just a few weeks ago when we did our podcast was when I learned most about them yeah, isn't that wild? as a person as people, right? Yeah. But I've all, but I I love them and I accept them. I I think I can I think even I have made them feel uncomfortable or, or, you know, like maybe like I don't approve because I'm just uneducated, but Mm -hmm. because it's completely unfamiliar, the LGBT world is just, it's new to me, Sure, but I got my flag up. I know I'm looking at it right now. It's beautiful. Yeah. I just, so I got my, I got my flag up and I, and I, uh, I think at the same, I think it has to do with like with alcohol is the same thing. I didn't know anything about alcohol, and every time I saw my dad with it, I just thought he was an evil person because he's drinking it. Right, you associated learned, the two. Yeah, they're not even related. Yeah, my dad's a great person yeah. with or without alcohol. Of course. Yeah, and so are you. You would be the same way if you wanted to start drinking. Sure. It's alcohol doesn't make you a less of a person. It's something that you can incorporate in your life, and if you abuse it, it can be a negative thing. Mm-hmm. But that's the truth with anything. So, so it's it's unfortunate that I think part of our Utah bubble culture is most people are Mormon. A, a, a lot yeah. more people I'll are Mormon that than not. Be, being in Utah complicates this by ten times. Yeah, yeah, because out people outside of Utah get that there are religions and there are people that don't do a lot of things because of their beliefs. But inside of Utah, it's the, it's almost the opposite. Where anybody that doesn't do what the church wants you to do is is foreign and wrong. Mm-hmm. And even, I mean, I, so so there's some sex education is another really important topic that is hardly covered. I read, I read something or heard something about their, about sex education being the poorest in Utah because Mm. of probably because of Mormon influence. Yeah. I would, I think sex doesn't sex and sex education doesn't get talked about enough between parents and their kids because Mormon families, for the most part, or maybe not even for the most part, but are not talking about it because it's not supposed to be happening. Hmm. But then at the same time, kids are still are going to they're going to have sex. They're going to have sex. Right. Or they're going to want to be or they're going to want to masturbate or they're going to want to watch porn or they're going to want to be gay, not want to be gay, but maybe they're gay Mm -hmm. and they can't they can't talk about it because it's not expected of them in in our church, culture sure. or in the church at all. But mm-hmm. like, yeah, that was my, that was my impression growing up. I know that's where my brothers were coming from, uh, growing up. They were clearly different their entire lives. Mm-hmm. They had behaved a lot differently than, than me and, yeah. and our friends. Yeah. And even though you could speculate that they're gay, they just had no way to express that. They didn't have any education about being gay. They just know they felt, I don't know if you listened to their episodes, but yeah. They, yeah, they just felt different. Yeah. So that's also, that's also, yeah. I think Utah culture is, 
and it's not really even the church's fault at this point. It's the I, people. That's that's what I want to say is that because I think that if if you really dive into the scriptures, really dive into what prophets and apostles are saying, it's not bottle these emotions up, these natural sexual emotions, never talk about them and feel really, really guilty about them. Like that's just that's just not the doctrine of the church, but it is the culture. Yeah. I will say that. And so in, in a family, we're like, oh, well, this is just isn't something that we talk about. But that doesn't mean that that's the way that it's supposed to be. It's so like the way that Mariah and I have reconciled it is when, as our son Case is growing up, that's going to be a very open dialogue. You know, we can talk about that. If Case masturbates, we can be like, okay, Case, like, like let's talk about it. It's not, a, it's not something that we can bury you over right now. Like, what, why did you feel that? Let's talk about it a little bit more. Have an open discussion. But I will agree that that's absolutely, you know, not, not the case in a lot of households. And so kind of circling back, um, what I've gathered as I've listened to you is it's really important in these interactions to put yourself in the other person's shoes and to not immediately jump to say, like, no, this person's wrong and there's no way out of that. Like, you have to be able to say, no. Caden's a smart, thoughtful person, and he's he hasn't just, you know, done all this because uh, he decided on a whim to do it. You know, that's not the case at all. So hear him out. Put yourself in their shoes. And I think then you'll be able to, to understand why they've made certain choices and then be okay with that. Because this is an interesting uh, dichotomy, too. In the church, we talk about agency. Uh, the ability to choose, and even our whole purpose in coming to earth is to, you know, choose between right and wrong or good and evil and make correct choices. And it was the adverse plan to force us to do all these things. So when I'm having an interaction with someone and they're using their agency to make a decision And in my mind, I'm trying to force them into what I think is going to be correct and what I think is going to be best for them is really adverse to what the gospel teaches, right? We teach that choice is important and that choice is up to the person. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah, keep going. But I I, I just, I I really struggle with it because um, I totally understand where like you're coming from or where anyone who's become disenchanted with the church, every story that I've ever heard, I'm like, yeah, I no, I totally get it. <laughs> I really try and be empathetic to those situations. Um, what, About leaving the church? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because it's, that's a big deal, especially when uh, everyone around you, I mean, like a lot of your close friends and your family, they're still going to be going to church, but you're like, okay, this is kind of a big deal. I'm not going to go to church, you know, but that's not just something that you stumbled into. So I, what my plea would be is to put yourself in their shoes, understand, um, let them use their agency and don't, don't be angry that you can't control their agency. We can't control people, you know? As much you as we, try. as much as we might yeah, want you, to, yeah, yeah, no, I get, I've, yeah, I have, yeah, I, I get that. I, it, controlling is, no one should be controlling, and as much as, have you ever listened to, Mormon stories podcasts? No, anything. So it's, it, you know anything about it? Mm-mm. It's a, uh, it's there's a fellow named John Delin mm-hmm. who, had a faith his faith crisis, in the early two thousands started a podcast. And has been trying to reconcile all of these issues. Mm-hmm. And ha- he says that he doesn't hate the church and doesn't want people to pull people out of the church. He wants to educate people in this way, mm-hmm. kind of like I kind of like I was saying earlier. There's a there's a whole level of education that's being missed because of the because okay so so what I'm what I'm trying to say is you and I can plea about this as much as we want Mm -hmm. but i think well first of all nobody listens to my podcast anyway (laughs) no one's gonna hear this (laughs) no one's even ever gonna hear this (laughs) but john delin who has mormon stories podcast who is the number one mormon influencer uh 
uh, uh, number one ex Mormon post Mormon influencer sure. is who reaches thousands of people daily will still only have a small impact on the inside Mormon culture because I, I can't think of another word besides indoctrination. There's a level of indoctrination inside the church that that makes people think or believe a certain way, mm. whether uh, whether they're, you know, um, educate that well educated or not. There's if you believe in the principles of the church, you're going to hold on to them. Mm -hmm. But if you're willing to accept, like you're saying, other people at, for their in their shoes, mm -hmm. then you can reason with them, but still hold on to what you believe. Sure. That needs to be taught in the church. I think, I oh. think the only way to, I think the real way to solve these, solve this, uh, the, this gap between ex Mormons, non Mormons with active Mormons mm. is the act. Part of it is active. The active Mormons need to be educated on what's going on outside of the church. Hmm. I can only remember being taught what I was supposed to do inside the church instead mm -hmm. of how to reach and love people outside of the church. Even though that was like the whole point yeah. of being a member of the church is yeah. to love, like you're saying, the doctrine is to be all inclusive. Sure. Even though there's a lot of things that are contradictory to that. Hmm. I think, and the, I mean, I'm not going to say there's nothing that the ex and non Mormons need to do. We're a bunch of assholes too. We just have to do it. We, uh, we just don't have an organization telling us what to do. We're all sure. we're figuring it out on our own and with each other. We don't have we don't have the, the church hmm. or something like the church telling us how to get along. Right. Does that make sense? No, I totally I totally agree with that. And uh, man, it's a tough thing because what what I would say is that the church when you when you come to church on Sundays, the main reason that we go to church is to partake of the sacrament and renew our covenants. Everything after that is like, oh, we're this this awesome community where we're we're kind of like minded people. We can, you know, build each other up and we can strengthen one another. Maybe we can learn some new doctrine. But in my experience, uh, the doctrine that we learn at church is uh, milk for babies. <laughs> like there there is this massive wealth of knowledge that is supposed to be gathered by personal revelation. And by you reading your own scriptures, reading uh, talks and reading church history stuff, uh, reading, you know, whatever you need to, and through the spirit coming to these own, your own conclusions. So in my personal life, that's the way that I've reconciled all of this. Because I think that you're right. If I just go to church and I just rely on what I learn in church, then I'm not going to have any luck in a situation like this. Because I'm just I'm not going to be able to compute why you think this way. Everyone right. at church thinks the way that I do, and so why do you not? But in my interactions uh, with the scriptures and personally, and you know, thinking through things, that's how I've been able to do that. So uh, with that, the church has come out with this whole new system. That's why they dropped that third hour of church, is because they want you're learning to be much more personal revelation focused. It's like, that's why we've left the boy scouts. Now we don't do scouting anymore. Right. They set up this awesome program that teaches you how to receive revelation for yourself and how to come to your own conclusion. So I would say that from what you're saying, there is hope in the sense that people are going to be able to come to these sort of conclusions. But I do agree that in like family situations and uh, just when you're out in society that you need to be able to come to these conclusions uh, by yourself. You can't rely on the two hours that you're learning at church, if that makes sense. Or just the content that you're getting out of those two hours. Right, because, yeah, it, at church, like today, we talked about the book of Revelation. We talked about chapters one through three and what the symbolism means. And, yeah, that's great, but <sighs> you – that's not going to teach you to be a better no, person. No, no, it's it's not. It's not. And I'm not <laughs> stupid, and I'm not blind to that. That's why you need to go home with that extra hour and really dive into yourself be, and answer these questions of like, okay, so, um, you know, is there even a God? You know, that's that's a question that I've puzzled over for myself that I didn't pick up out of the, the three hours at church or whatever when I was mm -hmm. growing up, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. So that that's kind of my roundabout way of 
hopefully answering your question is that I'm hoping that church members will uh, not just rely on those two hours. Because I think that you can absolutely come to the conclusions that I have that, that we've been talking about this whole time. That your agency is important. It's critical. Yes. Yeah. It, like, it's critical. Oh, I know. Oh, it drives me crazy that um, – because we'll, we'll go crazy over people using their agency. But really, if you're, if you're studying the scriptures, this is expected. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> that the whole point. People aren't going to agree with you. Yeah. You know, so I, that's interesting. I guess that, uh, that's how I, you know, that's kind of my way of reconciling it. That's a good way to look at it too. I, I have a, uh, especially as a missionary, I, I have this personality where I'm like, I really am, I'm all in and, I, or I'm all out. And if I'm all in, then I've got to know if I, when I got to know if I'm all in on the right thing. Sure. And if I'm all in then so should everybody else. Everybody mm. else should be all in. <laughs> it's not a good it's not a good trait to have. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? A lot of people feel that way. Yeah. And that's what's it's creating a lot of it, it's just it's again, it's such an interesting dichotomy. Because when you when you read in the New Testament, you know, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You know, what does that really mean to you as someone who goes to church every week? Because I would contend that you who doesn't go to church every week is way better at loving your neighbor than a lot of people who go to church every week, you know? The the church is just the key that can unlock a, a whole lot of potential to help you to become a better person. I found that it's done that for me. Yeah. And I, I think that you were just like, well, I I just don't agree with that, and that's fine. The truth is I've I've learned to love people better in a different way mm -hmm. after leaving the church in a way that's so much more satisfying okay. and rewarding not because not 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 like i well so i love i love interaction with people i yeah. love being in crowd in a crowd with people i know mostly and i love feeling like so that's why i love people having people in my home mm -hmm. i like to know that there are people that love me yeah. that will want to spend their time with me. And you've always been great at this Aww. all through high school. Well, I love – I really find great satisfaction in in knowing that the people that I care about the most are comfortable, are happy, are having fun, are willing – they're willing to, to express themselves. And I didn't – I don't – I, I – uh, and I, then at the same time also like to party. <laughs> I, I, when I say express yourself, I mean, I mean, like, cause some people, oh, just like, just like be their full self. What do you need? You good? I'm going for my chapstick, which you oh, know, I know, you know, all about I, that. I, know, I know you, I have some somewhere too. You got it. Okay. In, in ninth grade, Caden and I both did Accutane and we've been chapstick <laughs> addicts ever since. We got messed up off of Accutane. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I think part, I think part of it for me is I don't think I was ever suppressed because I was out of the church without, without feeling like I was ever suppressed. I think I could truthfully say that I, I just, I just know that there are people that are in the church that don't want to be in the church. Mm. Just like there are people that don't have the church or religion that would love to be in it. Mm. I think there are people inside the church that will, that like to express themselves and are comfortable with, the way I like, I live my life mm -hmm. and want to express themselves the same in similar ways. And I can, I can meet them in that way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but then at the same time, there are people that don't do the same things that I do. And I want them to also come into the same space and feel comfortable. Even though I know mm -hmm. like at the Halloween party, there was a good mix of yeah, active I mean, members. Yeah, that, the, I mean, we could really break apart that party. Cause that was kind of the, apex of what we're talking about in this yeah. whole conversation it was very interesting it was a very interesting dynamic i i didn't feel like i felt like for the most part everyone integrated pretty well oh but yeah i know it was a blast oh yeah oh yeah N not to take away from that i but i i felt like there was still kind of like and it was mostly like the kids playing the party doing the doing the game yeah and then the most of the married couples and you with a baby. Yeah. Well, I'll, I mean, I'll say that is so just so everyone knows that wasn't at this party. 
uh, it was this great time that that Caden put on here at Horsley's house. Um, everyone came. We played a game. Caden did a really good job for um, those that wanted to drink alcohol and those who didn't, that there was options for both of them. Like you made sure that everything was labeled, you know, if something had <laughs> alcohol in it. Yeah, big boy juice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and that was awesome. Like, every, I feel like everyone came and had a blast, but I'll say this. It, I had a really good time, but I did feel just out of my element. And I think that it's okay to feel that yeah, way. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with like, that. Like, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, uh, um, feel some type of way towards you because I was out of my element, but like, I'm there. Uh, people are drunk around me. There's loud music and I'm there with my wife and baby. Like, yeah. of course I'm going to feel out of place oh yeah my little five-month-old baby and but in this situation uh like i understood like okay i like i have i've come here there's a lot of people here that i love and we're gonna have a good time and yeah i mean this isn't what my friday nights normally look like (laughs) yeah for sure but it's okay yeah It, it shows a lot about your character about support for your friends and uh willing to step out of your comfort zone to enjoy an evening with people you people you don't get to see very often and and well really get to experiment and see something that you're not familiar with sure and uh on this at the same time um oh i i had i had another direction i wanted to go the party was the party was a good way to set up or to okay well i was gonna say that's I'm glad that you felt comfortable, even though it was out of your element, because that's ex- that's exactly what I'm trying to accomplish. Mm. I I like I like to know that the people that I grew up with, or the people that I'm meeting now who are on different pages than me, can still feel comfortable, yeah. be happy in the same space. And, and, and I was I was here for the most part that happened. Yeah. Oh, I think so too. I think I think everyone that was there had a good time. I hope so. Uh, but I also know that there were people that I invited that. I was hopeful that would come. Mm. I thought would come, and didn't come mm. without an explanation. And well, we're like, we're okay. Blew me off, basically. Right. Some people blew me off, and which is fine. But some people aren't comfortable with that environment. Yeah, aren't willing to acknowledge it. Kind of, in a sense, is mm. what is my impression. And um, that that's an attitude that I can't vibe with. Mm. I can't vibe with like a, I'm not going to, I don't want to be, what would you prefer that? Would you prefer for them to say, I really appreciate your invite. I don't know that I'd be comfortable. So we're going to sit this one out, but we hope you have an awesome time. Would you be upset with that response? I would be, I'll probably be, yeah, I'd probably be, You'd ups- be put off by like that. If I text you and, and let you know what was happening and you said, and you had said that same thing, I'm, I'm glad you invited me, but I have my wife and my kids and I don't want to be in that environment. I would probably be sad because of our relationship. Mm. I would, and I would think that it would be, that's well, again, that also speaks to your character. Cause even if you do feel that way, I would have never known you would, you were still there sure. to show support. If someone was, if someone was so, yeah, it would, it would suck, but I would get it. I would respect that and, and, and be able to understand, okay, this is not their environment that they would want to mm. maintain a relationship with me, I guess. I would hope I would be, that would be my response. If it was, if that relationship, that's a really healthy response. That's kind of what I would, I would hope you would say. I would hope. Yeah. I, well, I'm, I'm just, I'm thinking I haven't had that encounter yet. I think that's how I want to handle it. Well, people that, I mean, that's a question that I would like to have answered is because right now people don't know how to say that to you. It's, and I, would, yeah. I, I would just, I would just really hope that we're all just patient with one another because none of us know what the heck no, we're doing. We're all figuring it out. Yeah, <laughs> we're all doing it together. That's right. what I'm. Yeah, that's and exactly so what, right. What these people are feeling is like, man, the the church is really important to me. The beliefs are really important to me. I don't want to compromise them in any way, and I don't want to hurt Caden's feelings. So therefore, I'm going to ghost him, and I'm not going to yeah, say anything about because that this just party. erases it. Right. Yeah. But, but I, it, I don't I don't know what to I don't know what the best answer is. I really don't. No, I think I think you're I think okay, well I think you just you painted the picture. Um I think I can respect anybody else that doesn't want to be involved in something that they dis that they don't believe in as long as as long as I They're okay. up, do you want them to be upfront with you about it? I oh yeah. I would always rather clear 
mm. communication mm. and uh, and an awareness. Because if I if you were like, hey, I I mean, I, uh, I'll try to make it, and then you never text me back, mm. and that happens four or five or six times, I'm gonna be pissed at yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Because I because I care enough about our relationship. Yes. If I didn't care about you, I guess it wouldn't matter. But I. I would hope that you, if you would say, yeah, I, I care about our relationship, but that's not an environment I want to be a part of. I would hope that I would have, and anybody else in the same situation would have the, would have the respect to say, okay, I get that. And I want to continue a relationship in a way that you. Oh man. Have. I'm so happy to hear you say that. Well, yeah. And I think most people would. Yeah. They just, this is not getting communicated. Mm. I know it's, it's tough. We're, I mean, we're, there's this massive iceberg and we're barely chipping away at it. But I think that this is really valuable Yeah. because I think that the more transparent we are with one another. Um, and I would say in those interactions to communicate as much love as possible and to be like, and maybe try and for you, personal time is like paramount for how you want others to show you love. If, if I don't want to put words in your yeah, mouth. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, so to say something like, oh, I don't know if uh, that's a situation that we want to be in personally. I still really want to see you. I'm really going to make an effort. Let's go to lunch at this time or something. Would that be? Oh, yeah. Let's, or let's do something that we're both okay with. Like, let's go to Top Golf. Or and you would be bowling. fine with that. I would be stoked. I would be so stoked. See, here's here's a story, though, that people are making in their minds is uh, Caden's going to be mad at me if I say anything about this. It's true. Or he's or it's going to ruin our right it's gonna, relationship. It's going to ruin our relationship. So I don't want that's to say anything. Well, and, it, and I think for the most part, that's probably more one sided because I'm going to be OK with most of the parties you're going to be throwing anyway. So I'm going to be right. there. And oh, you got something to say? Yeah. You're raising I, your hand. This, here's, here's an interjection. Here's a story that I've made up. Uh, this is very applicable, I think. I feel a story that I've made up is if I were to invite you over for a game night or something uh, on a Friday night, uh, I, I have my my baby there and he's crying a lot of the time my story is Caden doesn't want to do this Caden would rather be doing something way cooler at a club whatever <laughs> I'm always high rolling though <laughs> I am always high rolling <laughs> what do you think about that story though is yeah, there any validity to that yeah I oh yeah well even um what happened that happened the other night um it was uh, at Hudges at Hudges game night. Yeah, it was Hudges game night, and I I can't remember. I got a late invite because of something something like that. But it was it was like married couples night, and mm. and I and they're like, "Would you even want?" I'm like, "Hell yeah, I want to be there." Yes, I lo I I really find so much sad, and it was kind of mixed because there was still alcohol if I wanted to drink, but I w nobody was drinking, so I wasn't drinking, and like that doesn't matter. I don't need a drink to have fun. I. I just love the interaction. Yeah. So if you could say, "Hey, I don't want to, I don't want to go to your house with a party because I because it makes me uncomfortable. I would rather do a game night." That's I, like that's a good compromise. I guess I guess that that is an excellent compromise. Um, I I do think though if if you're like, "Hey, I don't feel comfortable coming to your party. Do you want to come to church with me next week instead, and we can hang out?" <laughs> that's like that's probably the extreme on both sides, right? right. I think I'm not. I don't want to go to church. Right. I would go to support you if you were doing. Well, you something. have. Yeah, I, 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 I would. I hope I will always show support when I can. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't expect you to ask me to do anything that would make me uncomfortable either. Mm -hmm. If you were like, "I'm speaking in church," would you come support me? Hmm. I would be there ten times out of ten. Yeah, but if I you said, would. "Hey, do you want to come to church?" Or just. Like Caden, I'm having the missionaries over. Will yeah, come? exactly. Yeah, so, so some something like that. Like, I would I would want to do it if it would benefit you. I would. I don't want. I don't expect you to put me in a situation like that. To, I guess it's on. It's, so if like I was like, come party with me because come see how fun it is. Yeah. Come see how much fun we're having when we're drinking and when we're really loud and obnoxious. Yeah. yeah. And you're gonna have you're gonna be a much happier person doing this. <laughs> yeah. This is that's not that's and that's, that's a story that a lot of members are telling themselves is like. Caden and the rest of those that are that are drinking at this party, they think I'm stupid. They think I'm a square for not drinking. <laughs> yeah. When really, I think that there's a lot of people who drink alcohol who are like, no, I think that's really admirable that you're sticking up for uh, something that you believe in. Yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. There's no shame in being in being uh, being yourself, an authentic version of yourself, mm -hmm. even if it's even if it doesn't align with 
what your friends or peers right as long again as long as it's not harming me or my mm -hmm. family right i think that really is the bottom line yeah and i do want to vouch for you and say that caden's not just uh blowing smoke here he really came to my baby blessing uh when we bless case like two how far is the drive from here uh like it's an hour, an hour and, and a half that's a big deal you came an oh, hour yeah. and a half to a sacrament meeting just to watch me bless my baby and that's it's a special it That's was a, a special event yes yeah. yes and i think that um i i was just real. i was really happy to see you there and i was it wasn't this ploy you know it was just like no caden's my best friend and i want him to be there at this really important thing to me you know awesome Oh my well, gosh! Thank I'm you. gonna start tearing up, dude. You're getting, you're gonna start crying. <laughs> well, I have dude. I, that's what I've been telling a lot. Ever since I became a dad, like <laughs> the waterworks. You cry at everything. I, I do, dude. I cry. What was something that was <laughs> embarrassing that I cried at recently? Oh, it was at the end of Toy Story Four. Oh, I was like, I was like, I'm for gonna, sure. I was like, I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> <laughs> I cry at more movies now than I've ever even cried in my life. I cry at like, dude. I, I was watching yesterday the. Amanda, I was watching the UFC 245. <laughs> Did you see my tweet? I tweeted no, about it. No, you invited me to it, but oh yeah. Well, down south. I was watching. I was watching the early prelims, and um, and they were they were going through the highlights of uh, Amanda Nunez highlights and her story. She comes from a small town, yeah, and this whole thing, and now she's the best pound for pound women's fighter in history. Mm -hmm. And she was and she was telling talking about how grateful for, she is for. Her, her team i was i was like sniffling and <laughs> wiping tears i really was i was getting emotional and it, and and i was like and i i do this all of the time i think i love pa i love passion i get i mm -hmm. get emotional for passion mm -hmm. and for like deep rooted commitment to something that makes a person happy even if i don't know shit about <laughs> ufc <laughs> fighting right. about about mar mixed martial arts but i love to see someone who's respectable in their class at the top of their game, mm -hmm. be grateful and be humble. It was, you know, I was, yeah, I get emotional. Too. Yeah. There's no shame in it. No, there's there not. shouldn't be any shame <laughs> in, in crying unless you just like, unless you just cry, I guess. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why. If you, I mean, if you like spill something on your shirt and start crying, start we probably got to have yeah. a conversation. A problem. So, no, oh, that's awesome. Cool. Well, I've, I think that we've, uh, I, I think that this conversation has been really productive. Yeah. Have we allotted your? Oh yeah, we have. Huh? Seven thirty. We gotta yeah, get you on the road. We're coming up. I've got uh, I've got wife and baby commitments. And there you go. Gotta go yeah. take care of them. Um. So la the last I want to ask. Can I ask you two questions? Yeah. Go I won't for take it. more than ten minutes. Um. I want the a question that has kept coming back into my mind this whole time. Excuse me. Is is your is religion different to you than spirituality? Hmm. and if so how interesting i've always i've always as associated the two as the same and mm -hmm. now i've now i look at them as completely completely separate sure. um uh, entities i guess i don't know sure. there's two different things religion and spirituality hmm. spirituality okay um so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk from totally personal belief here. So I'm hoping oh, that yeah. you and all the listeners will the three be patient with me. Listen. You three or four that listen. <laughs> I can name them all too. <laughs> uh, I hope that you'll be patient with me here. But um, so what I believe is that um, through the prophet Joseph Smith, that the church was restored. This church was ancient, that it was set up by Jesus Christ, and that it was lost for a period of time and needed to be brought back. So w through Revelation, Joseph was able to make this church, and it's grown into what it is today. So there's um, all these different moving parts. There's prophets. There's apostles. And you could say that this uh, makes up the religion, I guess is what we'll call it, the structure of the church spirituality is your personal relationship to God. How, like what I talked about earlier, how good you are at receiving personal revelation, what your um, personal relationship is with Jesus Christ and how the church, the religion, the structure part of it is just a means to an end. 
all the covenants that you make, like through baptism, a covenant is a promise that you make through baptism, through going to the temple, uh, being sealed, uh, whatever you might choose to do. It's all a means to helping you to become more like Jesus Christ, to become more humble, to become more charitable. So the religion supplements the spirituality, if I want to talk in your terms. If we're, if I'm defined by, this is actually an interesting verse that I've been pondering a lot lately. There's a verse in Second Nephi where he's seeing into the future, into our day. And there's a lot of people who are saying, all is well in Zion, Zion prospereth. I think that that's the people who are, you're like, oh, I'm sealed. I uh, go to church every Sunday, so I'm good. I've checked all my religion quotes. I'm doing quotation marks for those of you who see can't them. see it. I can see them. <laughs> I've checked all of my religion uh, check boxes, and so I'm good to go. When really that's like, that is 10% of everything. Like there's a whole other 90% of spirituality where you're building your personal relationship and becoming better. So to answer your question as succinctly as I can, I would say that the religion supplements the spirituality, that you need uh, the structure of the religion, especially the covenants and the promises, uh, to enable you to reach your highest spiritual potential. Okay. Okay. So you you, you don't need – I can say I don't need religion to be spiritual. Hmm. I can't be religious – Without being spiritual, sure, right? and I would I would agree with that. And what I would double down on saying is that the religion I've found for me personally it it amplifies my spirituality by ten times. It enhances it, yeah, for me because and I because you are you believe in the, what the church is promoting, correct? Yeah, so, okay, cool. Have you ever have you ever thought about or have you ever have you ever Well, I don't actually, yeah, I'm going to, you can, well, I, I I just don't want to, I know you have to leave. So I I would, I just want to, have you ever seen, have you ever, I I actually don't even know how to Have you ever doubted? No. (laughs) Have you ever thought about leaving the church? (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm, it's, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, um, can you recognize your own spirituality? Can you see it as, do you see it as its own, as its own, um, thing Beyond the church, I know you're. Mm-hmm. I, I I can see what you're saying as a religion supplementing your spirituality, sure. but do you separate the two, hmm. or do you not? I I don't know. I don't know if you're understanding what I. What no, I'm, I I, 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 I think I think that I understand what you're saying, and I and I would say that uh, the religion, for me personally, and from what I believe, is wholly necessary uh, as part of your spirituality, because. The, the church, through restored priesthood power, has these specific ordinances and covenants that enable you to walk back into God's presence. Right. So, so those, spirit- are, those are needed, um, and they're essential. Yeah. But yeah. then my own personal spirituality is how I feel about those covenants. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So if you – yeah. Okay. That answers my the first question. Second question. <laughs> our Our – Babies born good or neutral? <laughs> <laughs> ah, the age old the question debate. That, yes. Um, again, I I can only answer it from and you, you ha- to agree with me. You have to believe in the church's doctrine. Um, but I believe that uh, we lived with God before this life as spirits. That we came here to earth. We inherited a body. And as such, we have divine potential to become like God because we are children of God. So when a child is born, he has this innate uh, ability, desire to do good and to um, to be a, a good person. But then a lot of that uh, comes into, what, what's the phrase? Uh, nature, nature and nurture. nurture. Yeah. I think that For the most part, people are naturally good. I will say that. But nurture plays an enormous role. So I think that children are born good in the sense that they have divine potential, that I do believe that most people have the desire and a natural moral sense of what's 
good and what's evil. And then nurture plays a huge role after that. I've never heard the the pre-mortal life be brought into play in the good or neutral <laughs> stance for the child. Right. Because I guess if you believe that doctrine, you believe you have been making choices yes. for however long you've been right. existed if, before. If, if you've come here to earth, what the church teaches is there were two plans that were presented. One was Jesus Christ, one was Satan. And if you're here, then you chose Jesus Christ's plan. So you've already made a great decision coming here to earth, and you already have um, good standing with God coming here, and you're, you're beloved by him. Were we making mistakes before we came to earth? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We had we had the the same ability to reason. And there were, I mean, Satan was so convincing in the pre-mortal, according to doctrine. I want to try and be as secular as possible. I don't want to act like I'm only talking to members. Um, but what is taught is that Satan was so convincing that a third of God's children decided to go with his plan. So you can imagine, I mean, there were definitely people who were like in the middle. Who were like, oh, I'm not sure. Fence. I think that uh, I'll go with God's plan. Yeah, you know. And so there was absolutely varying levels of. It's a lot like it is here, but there's no going back for the third that went with Satan, is there? They, they no, least, yeah, they lost their chance. They lost their chance. It's all given up for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, interesting. So okay, okay, awesome. That's a that's a cool perspective. I've never, I don't, I've never heard that be play, brought into play. Well, we're one, we're one hour, 23 minutes, 47 seconds. It's uh, 7.40 on a <clears throat> Sunday evening. That was a blast. That was a blast. Do you have anything else you want to say or plug before we before I kick you out of here? No, just that I love you, man. I, love I you think too. that you should keep grinding. And I think that you're, uh, that you're touching a lot of people. And you, you've always had that way about you. You've always been able to um, – everyone feels like they're your best friend. Oh, you know? Really? And, Yes, wow. I really feel that way. That's very nice to say. Um, because of what everything that you've talked about today. And I think that there are a lot of active members of the church who could learn a lot from you about how to interact with um, just everyone, you know, to, to be accepting, to make sure that you are making an honest effort to show love in your interactions and patience and understanding. Um, just like the... The Savior would. You, know, you call me Jesus Christ? I am not. <laughs> <laughs> you do look like Jesus right now, I do, though. with the long, the long hair. The long hair. That. I really I appreciate that. That's really nice. I think, well, I and I have to, I can't say that I am perfect by any means, but I have had, I have had you as an example our whole life, too. And I really think you and I are similar in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. most ways, like we've already discussed. Yes. And now we are... Now we are more mature, more independent, and able to choose, make our own decisions, uh, regardless of our other influences. But we could still hold on to what, where we were, or at least what we had in the past, and the relationship that we have now. So I, yeah, I think I think you're an excellent example of what what I would expect out of members of the church, mm -hmm. and as far as compassion and understanding and curiosity goes, there's, I don't, I think that this idea of, I don't know. So I'm not going to talk about it is really harmful. For like, I, I don't know the answer to the question. Oh, like, I don't know. I don't know about being gay. I don't know about, um, not being a member of the church. So I'm not going to ask my family member that's left yeah, the church. I'm yes. not going to ask this friend. I've being curious and willing to like the episode that I did with Cooper where he, uh, he so first, the most important thing is caring about other people. Yes. And the church the church teaches that to yes. the nth degree about caring and loving. Uh, but if that's not genuine, you're not going to get anywhere. So having genuine yes. love for people is, at, is first most important. And then right behind that is curiosity and mm -hmm. interest in another person. Mm -hmm. Cooper made a great point at saying because he wears a lot of – he wears makeup and, yeah. and likes to – He's likes good to at it too. Be different. Yeah, he's um, fucking amazing at it. And now he is facing this. Pe he's facing people that don't know anything about mm. men in makeup and it, and are uncomfortable. Yeah. When they, okay, I, I know. I'm sorry. I'm dragging. But no, I, no, no, no. But I think that I I think that if you, I think people will be have happier, better lives, better relationships with genuine 
love and curiosity and yeah. interest in people. So ask if you care about a person, ask them why they make the decisions that they make. If yes. you care, if there's no, there shouldn't be any problem with that. Yes. The person asking should have genuine love for the person and come off, come across as, as, as that. Yes. And the person that is answering should feel that this genuine curiosity and have enough, you know, understanding of what they're doing to explain it and if not they're like yeah i don't fucking know i don't go to church anymore i just yeah. don't i don't i don't feel it anymore and i don't i can't explain it but i'm glad that you are still willing to mm -hmm. accept me there's yeah. a just something there's something missed but i think you're an excellent example of being being a being a good example towards members that <laughs> You, look, it's okay. I'm it's getting, okay no, to I'm say. Getting, I don't get no, flustered. There, there are there are members of the church who uh, are mean, <laughs> and they, yeah. they, they're impatient. You know, yeah. and I, that's what. It, whenever I hear a story where someone has become disenchanted with the church because of an interaction, a bad interaction with a member, man, it breaks my heart in half. Because I'm like, oh, please, just don't associate everything with that person. <laughs> please don't. Yeah, they aren't the church. Uh, yeah, they're not the church. Yeah. But I can hear them saying, like, well, if they're going to church, then, you know, sh shouldn't they be acting a certain way? And, yeah, you're right. They should. But that's not going to be the case. Because, like we talked about earlier, we're all figuring it out. None of us are going to make the correct decision 100% of the time. Yeah. In fact, we're going to make the wrong decision most of the time. Yeah, until we're ninety, and then and then it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. And then we're going to be real by, about it. Yeah, <laughs> by by then we can actually have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, we're, like, we're on our deathbed, like, hey, I was a dick back then. <laughs> like you, you're actually not that bad of a guy. All right, man, I'm gonna make one plug for you. One last plug: if you really do want to lose weight or be healthy, then the links yes. are an excellent contact. Um, contact us because Mar Mariah Mariah does the Optavia, mm -hmm. but you don't have to go to her house to do it right no she it's just all over the phone she helps you all over the phone so and it's not she's just awesome at it and she does the food with optavia but she also does physical training personal training and she sells activewear and she really sells nice. activewear yeah so so the langston's are an excellent contact for that um and i will help you get in touch with them if you are at all interested if you can't find them you can always find me on my socials or you can comment in the the podcast on Apple or Spotify, wherever you listen, and uh, I'll get you in touch. We're what one hour, twenty nine minutes, forty eight seconds. Perfect. End it right on and hour and a half. Gonna, okay, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give it a, a seven seconds until we're gonna end this. But I really appreciate you being here. You got a little bit to drive, and I hope everybody has a wonderful day. <laughs>